Dzień dobry, dzień dobry everybody, cześć John. welcome back, Rivet Bonjour, and of course, Howdy, my comrades, to się, and of course, Kenosnan, Kenosnan. I hope you're all fine, and well, welcome back to Call of Duty's Gunslinger with me, Red Bull School. Last time we had a little run in with a Native American called Grey Wolf. So let's take a little look what we're facing. Thank today. you, darling. It's interesting how the truth can sometimes seem uh, might malleable, depending upon your point of view. Like how those dime novels make you out to be something you're not? Jack, don't be starting trouble. No, he's right. They do tend to exaggerate. Did they exaggerate your part in taking down the Daltons? Well, I was there in the flesh, boy, so I saw what happened firsthand. Dalton Rose. Nice. Those Daltons were lawmen once, before they all went bad, robbing banks and trains clear across the territory. Until Coffeeville, of course. I was one of the citizens who took up arms that day. Fighting on the side of the right? I did my best, sir. We all did. Have I gone to see Lucky Luke? <laughs> They call me about me on the Grey Wolf, the Apache Medicine Man, or for silence and mysterious warning, cautioning him to not to bother in the voice of bitterness and hate. Well. You all know Lucky Luke, I hope. It was early morning. One of my friends was a local gunsmith, and he handed out firearms to anybody who'd take one. You see, the Daltons got it in their heads to rob two banks at the same time. Two banks on the same damn street. Well, that sounds a little bit, uh... He can't stand it! That's crazy. Well, turn... Dime novels. The term originated with the first book in the Beale and Adams Dime Novel series, Malaski, the Indian Wife of the White Hunter, by Anna Stevens, dated the June 9, 1860. The series ran for 321 issues and established all the conventions of the genre. From delivered wood black print covers, Melodramatic and sensational stories that were popular among young working class audiences, mostly owing to the increased literacy rate of society in general at the time. They told all sorts of outlandish tales, usually in a western setting. Their style was simple and accessible. The characters won the characters with the one dimensional dimensional. Ugh. But they were page turners and the forerunner of one day mass printed paperbacks and comic books. They turned to many real characters of the day, outlaws, love, and the like, and celebrities of sorts. They helped create the one romanticized mythology of the Wild West that continues on in Hollywood westerns and TV shows to this very, very day. Okay. Rifle and the Grave Ranger, then here. What's there? Story was Bob Dalton's girl was always riding him about how he had no ambition. Oh, you're nobody next to Jesse James, she'd say. Finally, the bastard took his brothers to Cofferville just to shut her up. Right. It's always the woman's fault. Well, the locals recognized the Daltons right off. Before they could get away, half the town took up arms to defend their property. Their first mistake was pulling a job in their own damn hometown. Put some holes in them! Oh, I bombed them. A idea 
that I ever heard. She's an idea. Uh, one of the worst ideas I ever heard. The brothers pay dearly for their stupidity, but everybody knows they had it coming. There's more to it than that. I read all about that day, so I know for a fact that it went down very differently. Yeah, but that no one's First of all, it was high noon. It's all possible. Nice. U.S. deputy marshals were on the rooftop <gasps> across the street. Get ready, boys. They're gonna make a move. The lawmen had been tracking the dolphins for months. Now they finally had them dead to rights. Among them was a bounty hunter feared by many a lawbreaker. This man had no intention of letting the Dalton slip away. The marshals tried to get the Daltons to surrender. They'll give up eventually. You just gotta wait to suck the bitches out. This bounty hunter knew that the brothers were far too proud to ever lay down their guns. Shit, I'm sorry, I really had to uh, put my phone back on the power bank. Those boys had a reputation as stone-cold killers, so the marshals took every precaution, knowing they wouldn't go easy. I can't say it does best get inside the back. Of course. They met an adversary that day who had no fear and offered them no quarter. The marshals tried to get the Daltons to surrender. They'll give up eventually. We just gotta wait for something. This bounty hunter knew that the brothers were far too proud to ever lay down their guns. He went in there alone to confront those criminals. One of the marshals shouted, Where are you going? Are you crazy? Hey, where do you think you're going, dumbass? That rifle's mine. But he paid him no mind. The brothers are yours, Diggy. He saw a way to get around to the back of the bank. But he ignored it. Then he figured out how to hit the Daltons from a direction they weren't expecting. From above. Okay. Fortunately, a water tower was right there. Yeah. Oh, of course. A moment later, he was climbing up a steep ladder, laughing at danger as he did. Actually, I uh, wouldn't think he Brave would men like him who risked their lives to tame this wild country. We've Go. got company! Oh. Heroic oh, men like him, who did what other men couldn't or wouldn't to make this country free. Jim Bowie okay. and Davy Crockett, who died defending the Alamo. Is that Silas Greaves? Son of a bitch! Thank you for putting a bullet into me. I always love that. Huh. We've got Good morning. Company. Good morning. Is that Silas Greaves? Son of a bitch! How do you know? Thank you. Thank you. Oh shit! Slide to the right! Wrong side! Oh yeah! Okay, come on. Don't be such a stupid wuss now. Over there! Holy shit! Huh? Alright, coffee will. 
On October the 5th, 1892, the Dalton Gang appeared in their home channel of Coffeeville, Kansas. Their plan was to rob two banks at the same time. The targets were the CM Condon and Company's Bank and the First National Bank, located across the street from one another. Wells Bob, Brad and Ahmed, and their compadres Dick Broadwell and Bill Power split into two groups. Wearing false beards, they showed up at both banks where they opened planning to pull up a quick double highs. One of the groups robbed their bank without incident. The other was outfoxed by a brave crack bank employee who convinced the bandits that the safe was protected with a time lock, which would open for another 10 minutes. They waited for it to open and then in the time, the entire town rallied against them. The citizens of Coffee Bull recognized the Wells in spite of their last and clever disguises and had no intention of letting them escape with the money. A bloody gunfight broke out in the streets of Coffee Bill and the entire gang was killed, except for the youngest, Dalton Abbott, who was shot 23 times and sent to slap in prison but was released after 40 years. He would often say it was a US Marshal. Hank Thomas, who pushed the Daltons into attempting a crazy plan by track with the Relentless. Coffee Bull robbery, thanks to the black screen, was supposed to be the gang's ticket out of a life of crime. Instead, it was the ticket to a cemetery for most of them. Well, buck me sideways, I guess. Silas Greaves! What the hell? Now you're blank! Blank! Oh. Came away victorious, taking down those thieving Daltons. Yeah. Huh? Both four. Yeah. More concentration for headshots. Well, that sounds actually kind of nice. Revolver ammo capacity increased on the run, real what? Sprinting, more di dynamite looting, more concentration in the bar. Huh. Oh, this section guys go. Silas Greaves. And when the dust finally settled, he was the last man standing. Sorry, kid, but that just wasn't the way it happened. Say It was early evening, not high noon. Coffeeville, Kansas, October the 5th, 1892. I was late to the party and Coffeeville was already up in arms. Those pathetic deputies surrounding the bank were dropping like flies. Bob. He's there. I had been tracking those jokers for months, waiting for them to do something reckless. Oh boy, you are and finally, crazy. they did. Those stupid bastards decided to rob two banks at the same time in the same town where everybody knew them. But they still had friends and coffee for them. So. That again. Not dairy. I think this will be one of the sides I can take. Gotta take the way up. There is no way up. Those friends came after me like a pack of wild dogs. Tooth and nail. They were coming at me from all directions. I caught sight of the Daltons running with the money and didn't want to lose them. The problem was, they knew the town better than I did. And to top it off, I found myself in the middle of another shootout entirely. Did the Daltons hole up in somebody's house? No, it was the uh, Smiths, I believe. They were cousins of the Daltons. They were shooting at the Browns, who were shooting at the Dolphins. Which wasn't any surprise, as those two families have been feuding forever. 
And since the Joneses are related to the Browns, they shot at the Smiths, pissing off the Heimhoffers, whose daughter recently married a Smith. Say what well, now? Bullets were flying every which way as all the old feuds in Kansas caught fire all at once. There was a hell of a lot of pissed off people in Coffeeville that day. But that's just the way life is sometimes. Shit happens. Exactly what I would like to say. So, the Daltons, related to the famous young Bruce, the Dalton brothers, Brett and Bob and Emmett, gave up their jobs as lawmen in the 1890s to form the so called Dalton Gang. The sole purpose of their enterprise was to rob trains and banks and make a hell of a lot of money than they ever did as peace officers. They also coveted a bit of the notoriety their famous cousins enjoyed as members of the James Gang. One such robbery ended with the arrest of Brett, who then managed to astonish the marshals, who had him in custody by escaping from a moving train. Brett stole the key to his chains from an abbot guard and jumped through the window right into a river while the train was passing over the bridge. Well, that's actually kind of great. Adults weren't always so lucky. One of them Bob, desperate to make a reputation as an old law that would surpass that of Jesse James, suggested an incredibly daring plan. He wanted to rob two banks at the same time in broad daylight. On October the 5th, 1892, the brothers rode into Coffeeville, their hometown. They hid behind fake beers and attempted to do what no outlaw had done before. Their bold plan ended in complete disaster for the brothers and their comrades in arms. Bob died that day and his brother Emmett, shot 23 times, miraculously lived when the prison and was partly departed. He died in Hollywood in 1837 after trying his hand at being an actor, an author, and a real estate agent. The real estate agent. The real estate agent. Hey, I think I knew this. Know this, uh. The Dalton boys knew I would never give up. Those Daltons weren't the sharpest knives in the drawer, but they always stood together. They set a trap to slow me down and allow at least two of them to escape. The third brother stayed behind to plant me, just in case that trap of theirs didn't work. Doesn't look like it worked. decided to stand his ground and face me down. I ain't afraid of you, Silas Greaves. This is where it ends for you. He was determined to protect his brothers. I understood how he felt. Taking me on all by his lonesome wasn't exactly a recipe for a long life. But I almost put the wrong there. Oh. Come on, reload fast. Sorry, Emmett, but I have to cut it short. You are getting out of it. No, I'm not dead. I'm actually survived. But Emmett Dalton survived the robbery in Coffeeville. He's the only Dalton who did. They say he was shot 23 times. Well, Dwight, who do you think put all those damn holes in him? Looking like Swiss cheese. But I have to admit, that boy had grit. A lot of grit. So everybody, I'm going to cut it out here. And thank you everybody for being here with me on this wonderful, wonderful path of gaming. I hope you'll do me a few little favors, won't you? Please do me a little, 
those. Like, subscribe, and of course, comment down below. And the greatest thing that you can do me is by staying healthy and down back. So, after that, of course, I want to see you all. Keep on staying, keep on healthy, and don't forget, keep on ripping. <laughs> <laughs> Have a goddamn hiccup, thank you very much, and goodbye.